Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode two of the video series where I'm teaching Photoshop to those of you that have never used Photoshop. Now last week, we talked about layers. And I mentioned how layers are really the foundation of Photoshop. And you really have to understand layers in order to use Photoshop effectively. Well, we're going to build on that in this episode. We're going to talk about layer masks. And whenever possible, I'm going to try to tie in real-world situations, something you actually might encounter, and how you could fix it in Photoshop. And with an image like this, it's an interior of a room. If you expose properly for the room, the windows are blown out. If you expose properly for the windows, then the room is way underexposed. And in this case, there's four different stops between these two shots. Well, you could really take care of this in Photoshop, and it's relatively easy as, as well. And the reason why I wanted to do this type of image, because one aspect of professional photography that is growing today is that of a travel photographer and a real estate photographer. And either of those types of photographers will run into this issue every day. And it's really easy, again, to take care of. Now, I'm going to assume that most of you are Lightroom users and you would be sending the images over from Lightroom. So I am in Lightroom, but I am going to show those of you that don't use Lightroom how to load these images as well. But we're going to start out with Lightroom. I have them processed as I want in Lightroom and I'm ready to go. And at the end of the video, I will talk about how you should probably properly go about taking a shot like this, but I'll save that for the end. So we just want to select both of them down here in the film strip. I'm clicked on one. Because I have a Mac, I'm holding the Command key and I'm clicking on the second one. I'm just going to right click on an image, go up to Edit In, and down to Open as Layers in Photoshop. Now, if you had a PC, you would click on one and you would hold the Control key in and click on the second one and then everything else is the same. Now, it's going to take a while to open as layers. It always just takes a little while to get opened as layers in Photoshop. And if you remember last week, I talked about layers, and it was kind of akin to having actual photographs sitting on your desk, one stacked on the other. And what happens, a lot of times you want to bring parts of the layer that's on the bottom so it shows through to the layer that's on the top. Now, the way they're lined up now, we have the properly exposed image for the room on the bottom. We have the one that's properly exposed for the windows on top. Well, I'd like the room to show through. So you could like, if you had images actually on your desk, actual prints, you could cut out these windows with scissors and just like glue them on the bottom part. And then you'd have them, you know, one properly exposed image. Well, it's a lot easier actually in Photoshop using layer masks. Now I did mention that if you're not a Lightroom user, I'll show you how to load these and it's real easy. What you want to do is open Photoshop and go up to File, and then down to Scripts, and then down to Load Files into Stack. Click there, and this dialog box appears. You would browse your computer for the files, and when you find them, they'll show up here. And when they're there, you'll see this checkbox, Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images. Click that checkbox. That will align them at the pixel level. So when we mask out this image so that the proper properly exposed windows are with the properly exposed room it will look right it won't look like it's off it will look like it's geometrically one right on top of the other or physically one right on top of the other so i'm going to cancel out of that so now we're ready to do this uh, image now you notice when we sent them over from lightroom us lightroom users we didn't align these at pixel level we have to do that but before i do that i want them in a different configuration. I would prefer that the properly exposed room be on top. Now you actually could do it either way, but I think it will be easier if the properly exposed image, let me, sorry about that, properly exposed room image is on top. And to move it on top, you simply drag it. If, if what, the bottom layer has a padlock on it, then you won't be able to drag it. But since neither of these have padlocks, I was able to drag it. And we'll talk about padlocks and background images in future episodes. But for the sake of this episode, we really don't have to concern ourselves with it. We could easily drag the properly exposed image for the room on top of the other one. Now, we have to align these at pixel level because we didn't do that. And to do that is very easy. Go up to Edit, 
and then oh before we do that actually we have to select both of them I only have the top layer uh, selected and we have to select the bottom layer as well so to do that just like we did in Lightroom I'm gonna hold the command key in and click on the one that's not selected again if you have a PC you'd hold the control key in now we'll go up to edit in and we'll go down to auto align layers and when you do that you'll come up with this dialog box and it's asking you for the projection just use auto it works great now lens correction vignette removal removal and geometric distortion a lot of times that messes up the image I found and in my opinion you shouldn't check that and especially if you're a Lightroom user you already took care of geometric distortion and vignettes in lens correction tab in Lightroom right so you don't have to check those so I'm just gonna do auto and what it's gonna do it's gonna actually look at the pixels and align it to pixel level now I handheld this shot so you could see now we have some blank pixels over here because to align these this image it had to shift the image around a little bit to get it aligned there's nothing I could do about that except I'll crop this out at the end I'm not gonna do it right now we'll do it at the end so now we're ready to actually work on this image now I just want to select the top layer to do that I'm just going to hold the command key in again it's control if you have a PC and click on the one I don't want selected so I'm selected on this top layer I want to add a layer mask to it and we're gonna go down here in the bottom of this right hand panel and you'll see right here is the rectangle with a circle in it that's add layer mask we'll just click on that now we have a white layer mask you notice nothing happened to the image the white layer mask in this instance really isn't doing anything but we need to take those scissors to this and we need to cut out these windows of this layer so that the windows from the bottom layer come through now to do that when you're working with layer masks in Photoshop all you have to do is paint on the mask and you paint in the opposite color of what the mask is sometimes this is a little confusing until you use Photoshop a little bit but if you have a white mask and nothing has changed then you want to paint in the opposite color of the white and that is black so we're gonna get a brush on the left hand panel is our tool panel and the brush tools right here and you might want to take some notes I'm gonna throw out a lot of different keyboard shortcuts and things throughout this series and if you want to just quickly pick the brush tool hit the B key on your keyboard B for brush now we have the brush now whenever any tool is selected over here along the top are the tool attributes and you could actually set the settings for how the tool behaves now we need to get a brush that will properly brush out these windows and you might think that a square brush would work great and if you open here and you and you drag down you could probably find some square brushes but the problem with the square brushes is there's no hardness to select and it has been my experience that if you just used a really sharp edged hard square brush that the it doesn't look right because typically when window is when light is streaming through a window and you try to take a picture of it with a camera it will tend to blur around the edge a little bit so it's not a super sharp edge so you'd prefer having a softer brush and since none of these square brushes have an option to adjust hardness we're gonna have to use a round brush and I want to take hardness down a little bit right now it's a super hard brush there's no softness at all I want to add just a little softness so I'm gonna bring it to around 80% of hardness so it's it's mostly hard but not quite so 80% now you could also change the size of the brush with this slider but an easier way is to use the bracket keys on your keyboard so we'll close this down and to use the bracket keys the right bracket key makes it larger and the left bracket key makes it smaller now we could start painting right now we're clicked on this mask but it's a little small I'd like these windows to be larger I'd like the whole image to be bigger it's easier to look at what I'm painting at on so I'm gonna hit command plus to zoom in again if you have a PC it's control plus I'm just gonna hit it a few times till we're zoomed in now I'd like these windows to be up higher so I'm gonna hold the shift key in and you'll notice that the cursor turns into a little hand then you could click with the left mouse button and drag the image around if you have a center click wheel on your mouse you also could just spin that and it will move the image up and down 
So we're ready to paint on the mask. Make sure, this is very important, that you're painting on the mask. If you're on the actual image layer, the layer, the image itself, that is a no-no. You're going to paint on the actual pixels. We don't want to do that. We're painting on the mask. So make sure you clicked on that. And because the mask is white, we're going to want to paint in black. Now we're going to, we have our brush. If we look at our color swatches, you'll see we're set up perfectly right now. We have black as the foreground color. That is the color we're actually going to be painting in. White is the background color and we're not painting in that color. We're painting in black. Now, if for some reason you have colors here that aren't black and white for any reason whatever you just have you know odd colors there and you'd like the default colors there all you have to do is hit D for default on your keyboard and you'll see that they'll change to the black and white now we need black in the foreground you could click this little 90 degree arrow and it will swap them every time you click it but a faster way is the keyboard shortcut X just hit X until black is the foreground color now we're ready to paint now you can see I could just paint right on the window and magically that bottom layer is now showing through wherever I paint now a couple little tricks for this I first of all I don't have my tablet it's in the studio and I'm at home doing this video so unfortunately I'm using a mouse and I'm not real experienced doing this with the mouse so my apologies I'll do the best I can but we're gonna do the harder part first I think we'll go up here and do this this arch of the window best I can and then where it starts to get straight I'm gonna get a little smaller brush I think that one might be a little bit too big I'm gonna click once right here and I'm going to go down to the bottom because this is a pretty much a straight line. I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to hold the shift key in and click again. You'll see you'll paint a perfectly straight line. And we'll go over here. I want to pick a, paint a perfectly straight line along the bottom. I'm going to hold the shift key in again and we painted there. Now I'm going to go up to here, hold the shift key in again, and we painted one there. All right, now it's kind of not far over enough, I don't think. Or maybe it's over too far. I don't know. We'll fix it. Okay, now I could get a bigger brush now and paint the rest. So I'm going to hit the right bracket key. And I'm just going to try to go very quickly. Now I know, you know, you guys don't want to watch me paint. So I'm going to be kind of sloppy, obviously. You're going to want to do the best job possible, especially if you're doing this, you're a professional real estate photographer, and they're paying you to do this. You want to really labor over this and do the best job you can. Now, let's just say for the sake of argument, you make a mistake. You have this big brush and the cat jumps on your lap while you're doing this and you went like that. Well, what do you do? Well, no problem. All we gotta do now is paint white on the mask. So we're gonna switch these swatches so the white is the foreground and by hitting X and then you can just paint that away, just like that. Just any of your mistakes and you could better than um, apply this this trick like you know like oops I painted in white I made a mistake so hit the X key paint in black right so that's it that's all you got to do to get this looking halfway decent all right now I'm gonna quickly do the other ones same way I'm just going to do my best to not embarrass myself and to paint these in there relatively good. Now I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to hold the shift key in. Go to there. And I think I'll go to there. Then I'm going to click once there. And then go down here and hold the shift key in. And paint there. Then hold the shift key and paint there. And then um, I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And come in here and try to get in here a little bit. Oops, made a mistake. The statue is going to be a little tricky, so we're going to have to get a smaller brush. And, oops, hit the wrong key there. Come in here. And try to come in here. Now you'll see we're we're way zoomed in. I mean, so this looks probably like not as good. But when you zoom out, it's not as noticeable. And oops, so I made a little mistake there. I'm going to hit the X key, so I'm painting in white. And then go back to black. 
so we get this kind of looking decent. My heart is telling me to go fast, or my mind is telling me to go fast, but the professional in my heart is telling me to take my time and do a good job, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to probably end up somewhere in the middle. All right, so I, I did around the, the statue decently. I'm going to hit the right bracket key just so we could get this bigger brush so I could go a little quicker here and mask this in without embarrassing myself too much but you get the idea we're painting the mask and it's a lot it's, it's kind of akin to taking scissors and you had that physical stack of prints on your desk and you have scissors and you're cutting holes out of the top layer so this bottom layer comes through. So there's that. I'll try to do this one. Oops, I slipped a little. I'm going to hit X. So I paint in white. Hit X again. Probably have too big of a brush, but we'll see what we could do here. So hold the Shift key in. Hold the Shift key in. Hold the Shift key in. Hold the shift key in again. No, we kind of this. This window's a little funky. Pretty sloppy here. But you'll see once we zoom out, actually, it won't look as bad. All right, we'll get the bigger brush. Now, again, I'm going. I don't want you guys to have to see this, but part of me wants to just do all three windows. I just want to, I don't want to just show you one window. I want to show you all of them. Okay, so we have this window done, very sloppily done, but it's done. Now, we want to zoom back out. We could hit Command minus because I have a Mac Control minus if you have a PC and we'd zoom out. A faster way to just have it fit to the screen is hit Command zero or Control zero if you have a PC. Now we're zoomed out. Now you can see those mistakes aren't as obvious when we're zoomed out. So we did mask in those windows into this top layer and you know, you could say you're done, but to me now, as I look at them, they may be just a tiny bit, maybe dark, and I'd like those to be a little brighter. So what we could do is we could add an adjustment layer that just affects the properly exposed windows. Well, where are the properly exposed windows in our stack? It's the bottom image right here, right? The bottom stack. That's our properly exposed windows. So I want to make those brighter. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to get an adjustment layer. Now, remember, I'm in the Photography Workspace. You click right here, and I'm in the Photography Workspace. So if your Photoshop doesn't work, look at like mine, you may want to change your workspace to Photography. And I'm just going to get an, an Exposure Adjustment Layer. And when I click there, you'll see right above that lower layer that had the properly exposed windows, I now have an Exposure Adjustment Layer. And the way the exposure adjustment layer works, or any adjustment layer works, it will affect every image below it, or every layer bef below it. And in this case, we only have one layer below it. And if I take this exposure slider and I move it, you'll see it's going to just affect that one layer. So I just want to make them a little brighter. I think that might look a little more natural. So around a, around a stop, I added a light to that. And I think that looks a little more natural. Now, we could look at the mask. If you just want to see what the mask looks like, hold the Alt or Option key. And it's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and just click right on the mask. Mask, And you can see there's our paint on. You can see I missed some spots. Well, you could like fix that by make sure you, you're on the, in this case, black. I want to paint in black right on the mask. And I could just fix those spots I missed real easily doesn't matter that you can't see necessarily the actual image. I could fix these spots I missed like this real quickly. And now to get back to the actual image, hold the Alt or Option key in again and click on the mask again. And now we're back to the actual image. Now, when we align the pixels, remember we have some dead pixels over here, some blank pixels. I need to crop that out. The crop tool is on the tool panel, 
and it's right here and you can hit the C key on your keyboard to quickly use the keyboard shortcut to go to the crop tool. Now we have our tool attributes along the top and I'd like to keep the original ratio. It was originally a 2 to 3 ratioed shot and I'd like to keep that. Now I think it's going to be a little easier to crop this if I zoom out a little more. So I'm going to hit Command minus just to zoom out. And I'm just going to grab this corner here since the dead pixels are on the left and at the bottom. So I'm going to grab this corner and just pull it in just a little bit. Like that. And you can see that when you use the crop tool in Photoshop it will snap to the part just beyond the, the uh, the blank pixels so that it helps you crop it. And when you're done with the crop tool you click this checkbox right there and then you cropped it. So there is our properly exposed image. Now for those of you that are in Lightroom you want to go back to Lightroom just go up here to Photoshop quit Photoshop and it's going to ask you do you want to save this image and obviously you do so you're going to click Save and it will save the image. You can see the progress bar is down here in the lower left hand corner and it's saving this image exactly like this with these layers. So you actually could come back in and re-edit this later if you want. So once it's saved, and it will take a little while, and the, whenever you, the more layers you have, the more masks you have, and things like that, the bigger the file is going to be. So be aware of that. The files tend to get very large. So uh, let's drag these around. We have this image here, which is more or less properly exposed for the windows. It was 1 500th of a second F8 ISO 6400. Then this one which was properly exposed for the room, it had the same f-stop, same ISO, but it's 1 30th of a second. That's four stops difference. And then I used Photoshop and masks to mask in the windows so they look more properly exposed. And you can see it's relatively easy. I did it while talking and not really with my strongest tool possible, my tablet, I used a mouse, and I still did an adequate job. And you guys could probably do much better on your first try. Now, I mentioned that I would talk about how you would go about shooting this shot. If you're a real estate travel photographer, you preferably would like to use a tripod. I actually was in this basilica shooting something else, and I was walking to the office, and the office is like behind the altar on the side of the building, and I had to go out the side, and I went up the stairway, and I was going down this hallway, and I happened to look to my right, and there was this tiny little prayer room, and I thought, that's really unique. It's all rounded, you know, and I, so I was in a hurry, so I, and I didn't have a tripod, so I handheld the shot, and I actually took a bracketed set of nine images one stop apart. So I actually sat there and just held in my shutter so it took nine images right in a row and held it as still as I could and I still lost some pixels you saw on the left. It's really hard to hand hold a shot and have it perfectly aligned. It's probably impossible. So uh, you preferably use a tripod. Now for you could take just a bracketed set of images that would be the easiest and fastest way but probably the better way and the way to really nail it is you'd like to ex take two different exposures one for the room and one for the window and to go about doing that you'd like to have your camera in spot metering mode I'm gonna assume you don't have a light meter you'd have your camera in spot metering mode and you want to meter on something in the room that is medium gray the better option is just bring an 18 percent gray card with you Hold the gray card out in the middle of the room and meter on that and get a meter reading. Now you're going to keep the ISO the same between the two shots and the f-stop the same between the two shots. So all you really have to be concerned with yourself or concerned about is the shutter speed. So take a note of whatever that shutter speed is. Then point your spot meter of your camera to the window or windows and take a, a, a meter reading of that and that's going to give you another um, shutter speed. The f-stop and the ISO are going to be the same. Then what you want to do is set your camera up on the tripod, frame the scene, focus properly, put your camera in manual mode, dial in that ISO and f-stop that stay in the same, and put in one of the two shutter speeds. Take the shot. Then put in the second shutter speed and take the shot. Now you just took two shots. One is properly exposed for the room. One is properly exposed for the windows. You can take those two shots into Lightroom. Do what you need to do in Lightroom, lens correction, stuff like that. 
bring them over to Photoshop and then do what you need to do what I showed you to do for the windows. Now, another thing you might want to keep in mind, especially for you real estate photographers, is you got to try to make sure you take the shot without any distortion in this in the image. You this room has a rounded like ceiling. So it it's not applicable here maybe, but most rooms have square corners and you want your verticals vertical, your horizontals horizontal and your corner square. And I used a 14 to 24 millimeter lens for this image. And I was at 14 millimeters. And you can see right here. 14 millimeters introduces a lot of distortion in the shot. And this room, as you can see, at 14 millimeters, it looks small. So you can imagine this room is very, very small. Well, you would prefer to use a lens that's not going to introduce any geometric distortion into the image. And typically a 50 millimeter lens is perfect. It works great on full frame cameras and on a crop sensor camera. You won't have any geometric distortion, usually with a nifty 50 and they're not expensive. The problem though, is when you really have a tiny, tiny room that the 50 millimeter might not be in a wide enough angle of view to cover the room. Well, a dirty little secret of real estate photographers is they take panoramas with their 50 millimeter lens. So if they were in this situation with this tiny room, the 50 millimeter lens, I guarantee would obviously the angle of view would be such that it, you'd be missing all the stuff on the left and right. It really was that small of a room. So what they do is they take a panorama. They'll set their, they'll do those meter readings that they need to do. Then they set their camera up on the tripod, focus where they need to focus. They take a shot, let's say, at the left side of the room with the shutter speed set for the room exposure. Then they take a second shot with the shutter speed set for the window exposure. Then they will pan their camera to the right and overlap the image by one third to one quarter and take a second series of shots for the right side of the room. Again, one exposed, for the room and a second one exposed for the windows. Now they have four images and basically two panoramas they're going to create and then they will take those two panoramas and process them in Lightroom and then line them up in Photoshop and do the same thing I did. And they did that because they don't want any geometric distortion introduced into the scene. Now that 14 millimeter lens probably it's hard to see but i mean there's tons of distortion here the, you know look at this this should be flat and it's leaned in and this is leaned in so we really need you know if you're a gm you know if you're a um, real estate photographer if you're even a travel photographer you'd really like everything to be nice and square so keep that in mind and that's how you would go about taking shots like this so i hope that helps and i added that at the end because i don't know how many people are interested in knowing that and again you could do you could do um, a bracket like I did. I was in a hurry and I didn't have a tripod anyway and I just stood in the doorway. I actually leaned against the, the door opening to steady the shot as, as much as I could and fired off nine shots. And then you saw what we did here. Um, so it's really up to you. The obvious question you might say is, will HDR work? Yeah, it might work, but it, it usually doesn't look nice. So I, I strongly recommend that you don't do this realist if you're a real estate photographer or whatever don't do an hdr shot it just won't look right usually you'd prefer to use this method well i hope this helped you i hope this taught you something you didn't know i know working in photoshop could be a little tricky because it's a lot different than lightroom and next week we'll do something else that hopefully will build on this and help you become much more proficient in photoshop thank you everyone that watches my videos i truly do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon